Greetings. I have received numerous questions on how, when, and what to refill hydroponic tanks with. So let's look at a few different growing situations. This diagram shows that the container is nearly filled with nutrient solution at transplanting time, but the solution level goes down as the plant grows and is nearly empty by harvest time, and no solution has been added. The most basic situation is to grow one lettuce plant in a container of nutrient solution. The container was nearly empty by harvest time and no solution was added. Here is a picture of the net pot and the roots from this plant. Let's grow eight plants in this tank. At 34 days after transplanting, there is a lot of foliage growth coming from this tank. Over the next few days, I harvested half of the plants. At this point, about one inch of solution was remaining, but no solution had been added since transplanting time. Should I add more solution now? Well, the easiest approach is not to add any solution and just harvest the remaining plants in the next few days. Here is a situation where the plants are growing well, but suppose the solution dropped to about one centimeter, about a half an inch, and I want to grow the crop for another week. Well then, I would add increments of one centimeter of water, but do not exceed the three centimeter level. In other words, don't add more than two centimeters above the initial one centimeter level. Adding more than two centimeters of water will drown air roots and may cause the plants to wilt or even die. Normally, I would assume the plants received adequate nutrition from the original nutrient solution and would only add water, but small containers would require the addition of nutrient solution. A dipstick float valve is a great way to add water to a tank, but you could just pour it from a container. Let's turn our attention to adding nutrient solution to long-term crops like these cucumbers which are going to require more nutrient solution than was supplied at transplanting time. The cucumbers were grown in a plastic Costco storage container. At transplanting time, the tank was nearly full of nutrient solution with just a small airspace between the cover and the solution. The bottom one half inch of the net pots were immersed in solution. An enlarging moist airspace develops as the plants grow and the nutrient solution level decreases. Prior to transplanting, the tank is filled with nutrient solution to a level where the bottom centimeter or one half inch of the net pots are immersed in the solution. Transplanting this cucumber seedling is a quick and easy process. The nutrient solution level will slowly decrease as the crop grows. When the level reaches a selected point, somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 percent of the original level, it will be maintained there for the duration of the crop. This tank is 12 and a half inches deep, but the solution level is one and a half inches below that, so there are 11 inches, or about 28 centimeters, of solution at transplanting time. When the solution level drops to 5 inches, or about 12 centimeters, which is about 45 percent of the original level, this level will be maintained for the remainder of the crop. The nutrient solution level has not decreased much when the plants were small and no solution has been added yet, but the nutrient solution dropped to the 5 inch level when the plants became large, so more solution must be added. The recommendation would be to add increments of 1 half inch or about 1 centimeter of solution, but do not exceed 1 inch above the initial 5 inch mark so keep the level between 5 and 6 inches. Although the refill solution can just be poured into the tank, this bleach bottle button dripper waterer is a better method because it adds the solution slowly and gently. To make a bleach bottle button dripper waterer, drill a slightly undersized hole in a plastic bottle and then just insert the button dripper. I check the solution levels every day and follow the instructions and harvested a nice crop of cucumbers, so the system works. Here is the root system after the crop had been terminated. This is a close-up view of one of the plants. Another approach is to wait until the solution drops into the 40 to 60 percent range and then install a dipstick float valve which should maintain the level for the duration of the crop. Here a dipstick float valve is being installed into a tank of beautiful zinnia flowers. Here is an example of the working components of a dipstick float valve which might include a button dripper, a centrifuge tube with sponge neoprene on the cap, 
and a plug of extruded polystyrene. More detailed information on dipstick float valves may be found in two videos on this channel. Now, let's explore how the yogurt container float valve can maintain the solution level in a tank. First, the solution level is allowed to recede as the crop grows. When the solution level drops to 40 to 60 percent of the original level, the float valve is placed on the side of the tank and is supported by boards at a height where it will maintain the solution level for the duration of the crop. Here is a look at the inside of a yogurt container float valve. More details may be found in a video about yogurt container float valves on this channel. This is a side view of a yogurt container float valve. This elevated tank supplies nutrient solution to two float valves. Now, let us turn our attention to tomatoes growing in three gallon buckets. The buckets contain nine inches or about 22 and a half centimeters of nutrient solution at transplanting time. The plan is to allow the solution level to drop to the four inch or about the 10 centimeter level, which would be 44% of the original level and maintain it there for the duration of the crop. A yogurt container float valve is supported by a stack of tiles to a height where it maintains a nine inch level of solution in the buckets at transplanting time. Periodically, I remove a tile and this causes the solution level to drop by the height of the tile. By the way, notice that I am wearing Saka Shaka gloves. Check out my YouTube on these gloves. After removing a few tiles, the solution level is down to the seven inch mark. When enough tiles are removed to reach the four inch mark, I just maintain that level for the duration of the crop. The float valve is covered with a small black plastic bucket to protect it from sunlight. Notice the small tubing that transfers solution from the float valve to a one half inch polyethylene tube. This tube runs the length of the growing structure. Small tubing connects to individual buckets and transfers solution to them. Here is a close up showing the small tubing connecting to the bucket. The small tubing is actually one quarter inch or six millimeter in diameter. Nutrient solution flows from this raised tank to the float valve. The tank has a float valve connected to a live water source, but I only activate this when preparing a new batch of nutrient solution. The plants look pretty healthy in last year's tomato crop, so this method seems to be working. Let's talk a little bit about the content of the refill solutions. In order to learn the status of the existing nutrient solutions, we need to collect and test nutrient solutions in the tanks for the electrical conductivity and pH. A sample of nutrient solution may be sucked out of the tank with a plastic pipette. The reach of a pipette may be extended with rubber tubing if the pipette is not long enough. The collected sample is deposited into a small container. A sample of nutrient solution is being extracted and deposited into a small container. The EC of this sample from a hydroponic cucumber tank is 2.23 MS. Generally, if the sample is in a range of 1.5 to 2.5 MS, I will just refill with the original solution strength. Now the EC of this sample is way too high. I'm tempted to just add water as a refill solution, but instead we'll add one quarter strength solution just in case some nutrient levels are low. Yes, I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation. I have recently been making nutrient solution from master blend, calcium nitrate, and magnesium sulfate. There are also other good hydroponic fertilizers available. I make concentrated stock solutions because liquids are easy to measure with a graduate cylinder or a graduated pitcher. The pH of this sample looks to be around 6.5, which is fine. So again, I will just refill with the original solution. However, the pH of this sample is very high. So the refill solution needs to have either some pH down or ammonium sulfate added. You will just need to guess the amount for the first refill addition. And if the solution has not dropped into the pH five to seven range, then make adjustments and continue testing. If the pH is low, that is below 5.0, Place a tea bag filled with dolomite in the tank and remove it when the pH rises into the 5.0 to 7.0 range. Now we're going to take a sample from a bucket in which the tomatoes are growing. 
The sample is then deposited in a small plastic container. The EC is 1.74 ms. That's pretty good. I'm going to add the same refill solution as my previous refill. Actually, tomatoes are a little bit complicated because I like to start with an EC of 1.0 ms at transplanting and then increase it gradually to 2.0 later in the crop. The pH is around 6.5 and that's fine. So the refill solution will be the same as the previous refill solution in terms of how much pH down, if any, was added to the solution. It looks like we're getting some tomatoes, so this approach seems to be working. I don't have good research data on the exact details of optimum refill solutions. Therefore, I would appreciate if you could share your experience with refill solutions in the comments. Now remember, proper refilling makes life fulfilling. Mm -hmm.